Okay, welcome to my uh, Fazanadu speedrun tutorial series. But uh, this is the title screen, but this is all you're going to get to see of it. I have to get to a lot of talking here. Uh, the first uh, five minutes or so of the run are almost exactly the same every time, so I'm going to use this opportunity to explain all the game mechanics. Just make it as simple as possible, so even if you have a handle like Shiner or Gibbo, you'll be able to understand this. Okay, so first of all, uh, I have input display on, I'm just tapping A, but you don't have to do that. You just have to press A when this arrow comes up to advance text, so... I happen to know where all the arrows are and all the relevant dialogue boxes in the speedrun. You don't have to jump over that guy. So the first thing you do is come to this screen and suicide to this guy. Just walk left, like, keep getting pushed to the left. That's just what I do. It's not really a big deal, though. You have a lot of invincibility frames after you get hit to reposition yourself with. Uh, press up to talk to people. Uh, you can't skip this guy's dialogue. So you need this ring to be able to talk to the king. Uh, okay, some other mechanics. Uh, walking in this game. Uh, you don't initially start at full speed. It takes uh, a few frames. Uh, 60 frames or so, I forget. I'll actually look it up in a later video. Uh, to achieve full walk speed, uh, if you get hit or stop walking or start or finish uh, a regular attack on the ground. So if you're, if you're, I'll do a punch after I'm done talking to the king to show what I mean, but uh, I guess I can demonstrate too since this isn't actually a run, this is a tutorial. Um, yeah, if you do a regular attack that touches the ground, you will lose your walk speed. But you can jump as much as you want, and keep your speed. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly show that. Um, okay, so here I have full walk speed, and I finished that attack. That's that's early enough that uh, it was completely finished by the time I touched the ground, but this one's later. I still had active frames, uh, so I lose my walk speed there and there. Ooh. That might come to matter, actually. <laughs> okay, anyway, with this 1500 gold budget, you're supposed to buy magic and health, but by suiciding, you get those filled up for you. So what you do is uh, you come here and pull the Shaquille O'Neal and buy one of everything. Uh, the reason you do this is, well, you need a dagger because your punch has no hitbox. You can't do damage with that one. You need Deluge because it's your magic slot. It's the only magic you need for the whole speedrun, and it turns out to be very useful uh, throughout the entire run. Other forms of magic are more expensive and just not worth it. Just There's no reason to detour when Deluge accomplishes everything you need to do with magic perfectly. Uh, you need the elixir for a plot thing to uh, well advance the plot to be able to progress through the game. And you buy a red potion and sell it to decrement your gold by exactly 80. Oh, and I kept walk speed during all that. Basically you just uh, keep holding a direction in between each transaction. So. If you look at the input display right now, you'll see I'm already holding left. I press B to skip the dialogue uh, before they even get a letter out. Remember to just hold left in between each one. Press up while still holding left to uh, talk to the vendor again. And then you buy three jack keys. Oh, I didn't keep my walk speed. I must have screwed up then. <laughs> Okay, so then you want to equip all this, uh, one of your jack keys, your deluge, your magic, and your weapon. Uh, I navigate the menu as such, I use select to open the menu. Oh, you also lose your walk speed if you get hit, that's an important one. But uh, you can damage boost, which I will talk about later in this section. So, okay, some other game mechanics. Um, yeah, I'll talk about damage boosting actually. Uh, damage boosting, if you have full walk speed and get damage boosted in the direction you want to go in, you still lose uh, 10 frames. But 10 frames is only a sixth of a second, so... It's actually a good thing, usually. Because the alternative is to stand there and kill the enemy, which you can't do in one sixth of a second. Or unless you're gonna use nothing but deluge and maintain your walk speed. Not always an option, so... Um, as for damage boosting mechanics, you... Regardless of what direction you're facing, or what direction the enemy is facing, you only get pushed in the direction the enemy is currently moving in. So I'll be able to demonstrate this on the way out of town here. Also there's a glitch with the king to get more money. If you speak to the king with zero gold, you just get 1500, so you need to spend exactly enough. So I should have showed that off again. 
I will start taking safe states. That's what I call a Shiner Strike. This is where... Okay. It is basically... To use magic, you press up and B at the same time. You can do this at any point in the animation, so I can almost be finishing and I can get one out. Or I can do it right away. There we go, that's a late one. You can also do it in the air. Let's see if I can get one. Yeah, so I can attack in the air and shoot when low to the ground with no recovery. Just as an example, it's completely fluid. You can go, you can sh have only one on screen at a time, but you can shoot them as fast as you want. Okay, so there's two ways to do a Shiner Strike, as I call it. Uh, you can do one in the air, but if your spacing's wrong, then you'll just get hit and that'll happen. So, you'll notice that by just, you know, trying to go full speed like I'm supposed to, there's no way I can get this to land in the air. Maybe from really far away. Okay, fine. Hmm. I might have to start doing that, actually. Because, uh, when you cross through the store, I think you lose your walk speed. Since it's, uh, loading a new area. Hmm. Oops. You gotta be careful about that. Um, the the stab with the dagger does 5 damage, and a deluge does 6. And these hopping eyeball enemies have exactly 11 HP, so... You should just kill them efficiently with one dagger stab and one deluge. The order doesn't matter. Uh, your dagger will push back the enemy into your deluge sometimes. Or, maybe if you're really close, your deluge will come out first. See, and the active frames on the dagger hitbox will come out. Let me see if I can slow the emulator down and do that. Not that slow. Uh, what is my speed down button? Oh no, I've gone frame advance. Uh, <laughs> I'm just gonna quickly restart then. You never go full frame advance. This is what happens when you don't remember your own hotkeys. Okay, maybe it's not that one. There we go. Okay, let's slow this down even more. See if I can do the deluge first. Oops. A little too ridiculous there. This is funny. I can't do this now that I'm trying to do it at a slower speed and deconstructing what I do. Ooh. Also, my timing's off, right, because of the slower speed. Okay, well, I'll forget about that. Um, I've always done a, a grounded shiner strike, which means I just stand here and wait. There we go. So what I do is I uh, I start my attack and then just press B one more time. Yeah, you can see that in the input display. So basically by waiting a little bit, I'm actually planning to do the dagger hit first. So by pressing B a second time, the only thing that can happen is I shoot only one deluge. On this screen should be the same thing, another grounded shiner strike. And on this screen, you just jump over these. Now, I believe I have a save state. There we go, state three is set up for this screen. This is the very next screen, by the way, but I've already got my walk speed. What I do here, that's an aerial shiner strike. And then what you do next is a, a planned damage boost. So it looks like that. I'll explain what's going on and uh, try to do it slower, actually. So I might do the shiner strike really close, but I do walk left a little bit to bait this guy backwards a little bit. Otherwise, you'll just jump over. I can't... I'm never gonna time this at all at half speed, but... <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a visual confirmation thing. Oh, never mind. I couldn't get the turnaround. Hmm. Something that'll take a bit of practice to get the feel for, I think. But... Don't just go, like... Yeah, don't just keep pressing forward. You will have to walk left a certain distance. Uh, I might have a visual confirmation for this, actually. Let me see. Oops. Not 
quite. I'm just looking at the cracks in the floor to try to line it up here. That's not helping me though, this is something I've just done by feel. Huh. It's a little bit like, uh, if anyone's played fighting games, it's a little bit like going for a cross-up on, on this little spiky enemy. Hmm. I seem to have better luck judging, uh, just on the space between my character and the spike. Oh wow, I'm forgetting how to do this now. Okay, I seem to have better results doing the attack from farther away. Yeah, that, that works way better. If you do this from point blank, this is way harder to do. But if you go about a full character length away, yeah, it seems to work every time. Okay, so do it. Right, do it when, uh, I'll show you actually. Or I'll just pause the game on the... Right, well, not this far, but about when uh, your feet walk over that crack in the floor. Yeah, pretty much. That works every time. So when you're one entire brick away. <laughs> okay, and then next you climb up here. You can uh, hold right while holding up and you will slide off the ladder on the first possible frame. On this screen, okay, these, I'm gonna start using state two a little more vigilantly here. Oops. So what happens here, if the AI worked out correctly, yeah, these two enemies jump on top of each other. So one dagger hit will just take out, well, hit both of them once. So that will sacrifice your walk speed, but then you can start building it up while firing deluges. Uh, on these screens, you just jump over these guys. This one's a little trickier. You have to, you can't just jump right away. Oh, you can actually, okay. <laughs> it's uh, this screen I'm thinking of where it doesn't work and it changes everything actually. This guy has some weird timing, and you can't jump over him. So, oops. Sorry, this is my first take. I have to get used to using state 2 all the time here. Every screen. That was the plan. Okay. So, if you just try to jump, you'll even get hit by a cross-up. It only costs 10 frames, but we can do better than 10 frames. Just shoot a deluge to change its positioning. Oh. I also lost my walk speed. There we go. No, not there. There we go, that makes it work. This will also affect the AI on later screens. This is the same thing as uh, the other screen. They'll just hop together. Okay. So these hopping eyeball enemies uh, behave a little randomly based on the RNG, and the RNG is affected by how many frames the game has been on, I guess. Again, I got damage boosted to the left because this spike was moving to the left. Oops, got to hold right. Yeah, losing my walk speed is a bit of a problem too. <laughs> that looked really cool, but oops. shoot deluges on both of those. Try to be quick, because if your dagger lands, you also need your jack key out by this screen. Okay, I should have taken a save state here. Actually, no, I do want it to be back here. I'll show off my old strats here. Uh, wait for that guy to come down. Do the two-hit combo. All right, and that guy will be waiting for you in this case. If you do the longer strat on this screen, then the Hopping eyeball will just hop at you right away, which means you have to just do a jump attack right away. And that one you have to react to. That guy can go either left or right. This also sets up a damage boost on that guy. Okay. What you can do there is a very far away Shiner Strike, which I'll show off again. Ah. So what's going to happen is, uh, this is basically the max range. At, uh, I can land an attack. So the very tip of my dagger will strike out and hit that guy, and then the deluge will follow up. This is what you do if that guy hops left. So it's a little tricky, but basically you just jump over, jump over the spike at a 
max distance. Like, walk as far as you can without having to jump into the spike. Oh yeah, and I'm having, having to react there to different spacings on these hopping eyeball guys. Oh, I didn't get damage boosted. That's sad. Okay, but that's that's my old strat. Don't even do that anymore. I'm already on to using Deluge to just skip this screen. This also saves me one Deluge there because I... Actually, not really. <laughs> Okay, but if this guy hops to the right, just ignore him and go straight into this dungeon where you get the Matic. So I've got a different save state here. At this point, um, I've actually checked uh, what the ideal screens to come out on are. Oops. Okay, I'm gonna have to do another recording of my save states. Hmm, that was weird. That was also weird. I didn't jump forward. <laughs> I like to put on items while I'm in the air, just for less risk of screwing up when I hit the ground. Okay. So there's two ways this guy can react. I think if I wait a little bit, I'll get one where he jumps to the left first. Maybe not. I think the timer's frozen during... Yeah, timer freezes during dialogue. Okay. So... I've examined, uh, what screens... Okay, what, what you're doing here, you're supposed to come into this dungeon to get a Matic to break down a wall to continue with the game. It appears on the fourth time you visit this screen, so you have to walk back and forth a whole bunch to make that happen. So, based on what I found with uh, the RNG, uh, you also need to farm this guy one more time to have enough money when you get to the next town. So, I've I picked and chose... <laughs> Which screens are the best time to do it? See how if this guy walks left, I have to go all the way over here. Waste time. So, I found out the third and fourth screens are the ones where you should jump to the right. It might be different because of uh, my save states. Okay, so that's two. Not three. Might have to go back to another save state to get the proper <laughs> RNG seating. Okay, so that's one. Two. Sorry, that's in between three and four. So this is three. Should be this screen. Nope, maybe not. Okay, let's go all the way back to state three then. Practice uh, what I've showed off so far. This is the first part of the game. So this is what I think is the easy stuff. This should be really consistent and is also a really good way to start off the run. This is going to be part of like the route that you learn no matter what. This is just the optimal way to do all these screens. Okay, I don't need anything in this town, so you can just blow right by. Okay, this guy jumped to the right, so I have to kill an extra eyeball in the dungeon. Okay, so this is one. Skip this. Two. Skip this one. Three. No, oh, doesn't jump to my right. Hmm. Not sure what it could be then. Let's just check them all then. Okay, so this is two. Jumps to the left. After three. Never came at me. Hmm. That could be a problem. I should explain what I'm doing on this screen, actually. Okay, <laughs> a couple things. Which state is this? This is, uh, no, not those. Okay, state five. This is the fourth visit for the Matic screen. This is what I used to do. Okay, so. What's going on here? Um, you need to kill all the enemies on the screen to get the Matic to appear. But, okay, the way to do that is you wait for this guy to jump at you, do magic and then deluge. Uh, this spike will fall down the ladder, but you'll have to shoot it twice unless you do this very well-timed attack. Try to show that off at half speed. Oops.
Okay, I did the deluge too early. But I'm just going to pause the game for the visual cue I'm talking about here. There we go. When this spike is at this halfway uh, block in between uh, the middle ladder and below the platform, this one you want to jump and do an attack along with the deluge, which I will not be able to time at half speed, obviously. Okay. See, that extra deluge ended up not helping because my dagger hit did the job for me. Whoops. <laughs> Gotta watch that half speed timing. Or two deluges, I guess. Well, half speed's too hard. Let's go back to full speed. Okay. Not quite. There we go. So, you have to do it up there because uh, the middle rung, you won't hit. That was way too early for emphasis, I guess. But look at that, my stab has enough active frames that it doesn't matter. But basically, uh, I guess the spike would have to be either halfway down or right there. I think my dagger can hit up there, actually. That's what I'm trying to find out. No, it doesn't hit until uh, it's at that halfway point, it looks like. Yeah. Go at half speed and find out. Okay, so try to get... Yeah, it actually does not get hit until it's halfway down there. So I have to wait till it's down there, but if I wait until it's down... Not that far. Oh, well, not, well, not only fall quickly, but... Yeah, if it's right there... If I hit it, it's going to get uh, shoved off of the ladder and fall away, fall uh, too far away for my follow-up deluge to hit it. So, oops, gotta hold right. Oops, wrong button. Oh, I can even get a double stab, actually, with really good timing. But for insurance purposes, I always fire a deluge in there, because that's just the fastest way to kill it. Now, from this point, you have two options. Uh, the safe way is to just go up here and do this. Well, actually, you can move forward in between shots. Just to cover a little bit of ground. Oops, that was too early. You can only have one deluge on screen, after all. Oops. Actually, it would be best of all if you're planning on doing this the safe way. Although you, I mentioned you can have only one deluge on screen at a time. There we go. You can do two deluges in one swing. But the problem is then you'll be too close to make the jump. You need a little bit of momentum to be able to make this jump, I think. Let me just test that. Oops. So, okay, you can make it. But I did walk back a little bit, just for certainty. <laughs> So it looks a little little bit clunky, but it is the safe way to do it. Well, the more obvious way to do it, I guess. Even go like that so you have more walk speed, more likely to nail the jump. But I've been working on a further optimization on the screen. Remember how I talked about damage boost mechanics are only based on the direction the enemy is facing. So there we go. That guy was moving right, so I got damage boosted to the right. And because this guy drops bread, the damage I took is refunded immediately. No reason not to do it if you know it will work. Now here's the thing, So one problem, if I do this perfectly, then everything goes too fast, and this guy's cycle is out of alignment, and I get pushed off. So, I've come up with a few setups. If you wait, wait a little bit if you do it perfectly, or what you can do, you can just wait for that guy to come down? No, that's not it at all. Just walk under the ladder instead of jumping to it. Uh, what was another thing? This was also based on another mistake I was making. Um, if you miss the ladder, you can jump to the left, jump back at it, climb on. Okay, that didn't work actually. <laughs> There we go, that should... no, it doesn't work. 
Or if you miss the quick kill. Okay, that's a narrow window. Um, we're just gonna kill the other two enemies, and we're just gonna watch this spike. Watch this pattern. This spike always does this. If you're if you're standing to the left of it, it always moves in this pattern. If you stand to the right of it, it looks different. But if you stand over here to the left, it always does this. This uh, left, right, left, right, left, right. Da, 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 da. Like, look, <laughs> I think that looks inverted on the webcam, but that's what I mean. That quick little reset. That's another opportunity for damage boosts, although it is a tinier window. And if you climb up here too fast, you can also wait at the top. So that's the risky version, but of course, if you fall down... I'm just going to get knocked down on purpose here. Then you have to climb all the way back up. And try it again. <laughs> but you've already taken twice as much damage. This will affect your planning for a, a later section, though. So, just do this one more time. Uh, I guess I'll do a version where you don't do the quick kill on that ladder enemy. Yeah, if you miss the quick kill, then you'll just always get this, it seems. I'll make it super easy, even. Just wait for that guy to fall down. Oh, I might have to get the coin first. Oops. Okay, you have to grab the coin while you're waiting. Oh, and also... Go like that? That doesn't make sense, though. Hmm. I'm making this grand assumption that you will not stab that spike as it's coming down the ladder. Okay, I actually, if I'd waited a little bit longer, that would have worked. Okay, that barely worked, just because of the turnaround, uh, right there. That was <laughs> barely slow enough, as I would call it. There we go, that was also <laughs> barely slow enough. Any faster and I would have gotten knocked off. So, let's find something easier? You can't leave this coin behind either, because it disappears very quickly. Oh, this is... How's this gonna go? Okay, it might work. Nope. I was in that very short turnaround pattern. Okay, I missed the ladder. This will probably work then. Oh yeah, and what you do when you're over here, I will actually slow the game down for that part. Or not. <laughs> Problem is there's no point when I can just let go of the controller, so... Okay, that'll work. Simple. I just, uh... You have invincibility after you get hit, so I use it to walk to the right a little bit, which is unnecessary, but... Just to make sure I turn left, and then fire two deluges. Just, like, hold up B. Hold up, press B twice. I mean... These... If you didn't already know that, uh, the only way to damage these spike enemies is with magic. Your dagger hitbox just goes over top of them, so... Deluge is the only way. But I, I'm hoping if you were planning to speedrun this game, you'd already know that. But... <laughs> um, oh. Alright, if I do it all correctly... I'm just trying to find an easier strat here. That was a little bit too fast. Okay, that was not going to work at all. That was on the long moving left section. Actually, what you could do... Well, I can't go like that because then the spike won't fall down. That's why I'm standing to the left all the time. No, that was a little bit too fast. Needed to kill some time somewhere. Oh, that would have worked. I just missed the jump. Wow, that was barely slow enough. Okay. Anyway, it seems the most guaranteed setup is to do it correctly. Wait a little bit. I wish I could say, give something more precise than a little bit, but whiffing a stab as a setup would be too long, I'm pretty sure. 
No, it works actually. Okay. Let's just verify that. Oh, it's actually a little bit risky because you're in that rapid turnaround part of the animation. So, say you jump a little bit late or something. Yeah, that was a little bit early or late. Okay, so less time than it would take to just stand there and stab. Let's put it that way. I see now. So I made a mistake there, and that made it work out. But anyway, once you have this Matic, you want to equip it on this screen. Be ready to react to that guy jumping to the right. And this screen, just going to have to improvise a lot. Uh, that's... Alright, I will make a save state just to show off different strategies for this screen. Because it can be very random based on, well, not only this room, but... Ah. <laughs> Oops. Okay. No, that's not going to work. If you can just tell it's not going to work, then stand there and do the save strat. Okay, so that's a common, uh, really common one. Uh, usually, if this guy jumps to the left, what you want to do... Okay. Again, I'm going to slow the game down just to show my inputs. So, tap right to turn around, then neutral jump and do a stab. You can stab again to get the kill, but I use deluge so that I can keep walking at full speed. I took this save state a little bit uh, early, actually. What I wanted to show off is uh, you do an aerial uh, shiner strike, as I call it, on that guy. Oh, that was too fast. It's not gonna work. That'll work though. Okay, and this screen is also really random. Sorry, imagine an enemy jumping to the right, you would actually just go like that as soon as you enter. So try to react to it. Just just be ready to react to it if it happens. Otherwise, I think hopping to the left is the more likely outcome. Okay, and the reason why I took the save state on this screen is I think if I wait a long time, I'll get a different result. Oh, and if you exit facing right, you will just exit the dungeon facing right. Interesting. Actually, I didn't know about that mechanic. And if you only get one hit, well, a deluge will still finish the job, so that's why I recommend finishing with deluge. Now this screen, this screen is very random, and there's a lot of ways to approach it. Oh, and there's another mechanic I <laughs> didn't talk about in the quick intro, uh, one that I call ladder resets. Okay, so let me see if I can force one more different result out of here. No, always getting the hop left. Okay, so one more, just to make a good save state. <laughs> Okay, so this screen is always very random, just because of these two guys uh, hopping around and doing different things based on where you are. Uh, one thing you can do is you can stab through the wall to weaken these guys. Although, moving around at full speed. Okay, notice if you get hit on a ladder, you stop going in the climbing animation. You can't do anything out of a climbing animation. You can't attack, you can't jump. Uh, you can use items, though. Well, you can't do anything with that one, though, but you can definitely use wing boots, that's for sure. Pretty sure you can use red potions as well. So what you can do is if you get hit, go into a neutral state and you can jump off the ladder. So this will actually uh, speed you up a little bit. Not only just for movement, but also uh, fighting this thing. Kind of like that. Although I had to wait a little bit, so... Hard to say if there was profit in the end. Okay, so... You kind of have to use your judgment from... This is like your uh, final exam for fighting hopping eyeball enemies because they're the last ones, well, second last ones in the entire run. The only ones that really matter, though. The only ones, certainly the only ones in the entire run that pose a threat at all. Because uh, the amount of damage you take from them can vary quite a bit. Oops. So, <laughs> there you go. My dagger hitbox is not low enough to get a third hit there. Okay. 
I actually really like that. I should start doing that. If you get a double stab, you should uh, go for a third dagger hit, usually. You can save a deluge that way. Okay, and this screen is an important one. I have a save state for here. There's two ways to do this screen. If the enemy hops to the right, then you do it the normal way. Let me check what it's, uh, right, a state nine. I'll get to that later though. I just want to show off some other strats for this screen. Uh, if you really don't want to take damage for whatever reason, the safe thing to do is just wait here, get two free hits on that guy. And eventually the other one will hop down there as well. So hopefully you just corner both of them, only get hit once. And it looks something like that. It's just one way to do it. Uh, this screen can vary a little bit. Again, you have to use your judgment for whether you do your two-hit combo on the ground or in the air. Okay, if you if this guy jumps to the right, okay, I didn't quite get it. So uh, I need to get a jump to the right. Sorry, I'll get a save state on the screen transition this time. And to climb a little higher to get the ladder reset there. Okay. Actually, I can't take it on the screen transition, because then it'll be the same as state 9. Okay, so that's the fast way to do this screen, but uh, I'll talk about it in depth a little more. And I'll take my state 2 on the ladder then. Okay, and if you accidentally get hit, then just wait a little bit and uh, just do an attack. Uh, your dagger hitbox, it has a hitbox on the hilt, like even as it's coming out. Sorry, let me try to get the animation. That's weird, it won't show me that, that frame. Okay, yeah, like that. I don't know if there's a hitbox yet, but for sure uh, I can feel one. Oh. oh, not even before I get to that point. It looks like the neutral animation again. Yeah, right here. There's already a hitbox on the dagger, like right in front of you. So if you're invincible, you can stand inside enemies and hit them with what feels like uh, the reverse hitbox. It'd be kind of like, if I was holding it, it would be on my wrist. I don't know. Oh, I missed my chance for the save state here. <laughs> this guy, okay, this guy hopped right. So you do the easy strategy, do a two hit combo, wait for the ghosts to go by, then climb up and jump over them. You have to jump when your back foot is on that ledge or you won't have enough speed to make it. Okay, so uh, it also works here. If you don't want to do the trick, this is what it looks like. Remember, it has to be from your back foot. Because um, if it's not, then you're going to fall short. If I just jump off my front foot, you're going to miss it. This game has some tough platforming sometimes. Okay, so I'm going to go to half speed again. So, there we go. That's, that's actually really, it's a lot easier for me at half speed in this case. So again, I'm trying to cause a ladder reset, but if you don't climb high enough, say my hair fits under the platform, then you're gonna get knocked off. So, what I find works best is kill this guy as soon as possible. And, oh, this will also give me a chance to talk about something else. Uh, when climbing ladders, do not, if I hold up, what happens is you start climbing from like the very bottom. Right, I'm like on the half rung here even. This is actually how low you can climb down a ladder, so that's this is what's happening. I noticed that uh, if I just jump repeatedly, let me get these ghosts out of the way to show this off too. Okay, gravity in this game is a big deal. I mean, you fall really quickly, but you also jump up really quickly. So, you know, this is about how fast I can jump like this, but this is how fast I can climb. This is much slower, this vertical movement. This is not optimal. This is why I want to get ladder resets. So this also means going like this. Actually, I can't do this like out of habit. Yeah, oh, this feels gross to me. Holding up before you touch a ladder will make you uh, climb from below. But just jumping, you overcome the force of gravity quicker by just jumping. So this is an important part of getting this ladder reset is uh, you have to jump at the ladder and grab it like with your head. <laughs> Yay, I got it. Jump and celebrate. I got another one. Jump around and celebrate. And that one pushed me up. That was planned. <laughs> okay, so what are some other tips for this? Uh, kill that. Kill this guy as far away as possible. 
I don't know why this works, but the farther away you can kill this guy, the better it works. Even That seems not intuitive because you, know, you want to keep that full walk speed, right? But your initial speed is so bad that you have to kind of <laughs> make sure you can reach it for a good jump arc. I actually stopped climbing too early. This is another important thing about the tricks. If you hold up, you'll start climbing again. So if you watch my input display, I have to let go of up right before I get hit. I'm actually looking at my input display instead of the ladder. Also helps, I'm looking at my character on the ladder when I'm actually playing. Need to make sure that, uh, let's see, I won't get ladder reset here. My hair is one pixel above the, <laughs> just, well, not even actually. It's one pixel below, but this is enough to uh, not get hit off the ladder. Or if I climb down just a little bit. Just this much even? Yeah, I can move left and right here. So that's enough to get ladder reset. If I go up one pixel, can't get ladder reset. Uh, can't fall off the ladder. That's good. So again, in summary, you have to kill this highball from far away, grab the ladder with your head, climb up, let go of up before you get hit. It's not like there's a huge frame window for anything. It's just like a pixel positioning thing. And if you get hit, well, then you just climb up like normal. So... The, the cost for speculating on this trick, look how little damage these ghosts do. It's almost nothing. And even still, on the very next screen, you get a big chunk of bread from an enemy to heal it back with, so... Turns out I'm actually pretty inconsistent at this trick. Practicing the, the arc for your jump helps a little bit, too. Okay, so this screen... Uh, no, I actually only used Deluz once, my bad. So that was too close, not enough time. If you think you're not going to have enough time, then just uh, well, not even keep climbing to hope you make it, but... <laughs> I guess you could just keep climbing as hard as you can, thinking that one pixel will help you get it. And if you miss it, well, the punishment's not too bad. You have to jump over this guy, though, or you'll get hit. Okay, so that's how that goes. Uh, shoot one deluge to knock that guy back, and then get close enough for a uh, double stabbing range. Yeah, if you're close enough to enemies, your dagger hitbox will hit them again after they're, uh... Okay, one trick that'll... Let me take another save state there. Um... Okay, one thing that makes this easier... If I stand still and don't attack for a little bit, this enemy will walk towards me. So... Ah, that was a little bit late. <laughs> This guy usually is trying to walk at you the moment you want to unleash your attacks. That'll make it a little bit easier. And right here, you just want to shoot four deluges so you can keep moving full speed. Okay. Oh, this screen. I can't wait to talk about this screen. <laughs> Ooh, jumping attacks. Okay. So again, don't hold up while grabbing this ladder. You gotta grab it with your head and climb as fast as you can. Okay, so I have a few setups for this screen. Um, this white mage has 29 HP, I think, or 26. Let me just, uh, pretty sure it takes six stabs. Five, six? Okay, but it should take four stabs and one deluge. Might be 27 then. So, one, two, three, one, two. Okay, 27 HP. So that means probably want to shoot two deluges at this guy. That's the most efficient way to get this over with. So, I found a couple patterns. These guys generally, uh, their pattern is to just walk at you, stop, walk at you, stop, and then attack, stop. So there it is. Let's walk, walk, shoot. Walk, walk, shoot. And they always move towards you. This guy will not juke away. However, you can cause some shenanigans. By stabbing them, they'll walk the other way a little bit. Oops, I'm just trying to show off. Uh, what happens if you hit them later in the animation? I'm just instinctively doing it as soon as they start. You can also make them uh, shoot the other way different timings but okay so what happens here 
First thing you do is I walk up and stab. But notice this puts me on top of a ladder. If I press up B on a ladder, I start climbing it. So, you have to be careful here. So again, I'm going to apply some more uh, fighting game, particularly uh, Street Fighter analogies here. Or, uh, what's the best way to beat a fireball? If you're, if you predict your opponent is going to fireball, just jump forward at them and you start a jump in combo. So that's kind of the same methodology I'm using here. So I jump over this fireball, get in one stab, uh, shoot a deluge on the way up, because this is something I talked about earlier. You can shoot deluges and not lose speed. Oops. <laughs> you can get caught on a ladder though. In fact, I was doing it on the previous screen, remember? Oops. Wow. Well, this clearly needs more practice. Oh, that was too close. So again, I can shoot deluges the whole way and not lose speed, but as soon as I stab, there goes, well, bad example. I'm actually going to re-enter the screen since I'm going to load my save state anyway. What I used to do is three deluges and a stab, but then you lose your walk speed. So basically I'm trying to gain as much ground as possible while also fighting this guy. So it's basically like a simple procedure. If you have to jump over a fireball, shoot a deluge on the way up. Otherwise, uh, walk in and do stabs. Even if you don't get double stabs, if you're too scared to get close enough for a double stab. Uh, <laughs> it's basically my pattern. I just like always, always stab when I land. I guess I just know the spacing well enough that I can keep attacking repeatedly, but. So I will try to do a no double stab route here, or strat. Ah, see, <laughs> that, was, that was too far away. I'm actually just going for the tip all the time instead of just like deliberately avoiding double stabs. That's kind of the going in the wrong direction. Ooh, actually got a bit too close there. Oops. So I, I do have to react to uh, this guy's behavior a little bit. There are times where uh, the deluge causes the... Uh, Weird res yeah, that. The deluge impacts uh, right before he does the stop, so it's like he turns around and walks back at me. Ooh, that was a little funky. Thought I had one more hit in me. Whoa, that was getting way too close. Okay, so first thing you do is always deluge, jump over that fireball, stab, and get ready to deluge over the next fireball. Then two more stabs should do it. Ah, I pressed B too early there. You can't, uh... There we go. So, it, it's actually inevitable, I think, that you get a double stab. Either you walk too close to cause a double stab, particularly because this guy is trying to walk at you while you have your dagger out. And if you get too close, well, just start stabbing to push him away, get some distance. Okay. I can't start an attack in the air though, that's weird. Maybe I'm negative edging or something? Let me figure this out for sure here. Okay, that was bad. That, <laughs> that whiffed attack was bad, but... Oops. Okay, that ladder screwed me up a little bit. But that's how you recover from that. It's still the same attack pattern, no matter what the spacing. I'm actually going to neutral jump one of these. Two of them, even. We'll just see how the fight goes now. I can't do the deluge there because the ladder's in the way. And yeah. How about I mix up my spacing some more? I'm going to go to this screen with some walk speed and just see how this fight changes. Okay, that was letting myself get too close. It would be without walk speed, I think, would be a little more realistic. Okay, I let myself get too close again. But yeah, this is like a really simple pattern, I think. Generally, you will uh, get closer and closer throughout the fight, because this guy's always trying to walk at you, right? Excuse me. 
Okay, I'll take a safe state on this screen to show off uh, some similar tactics on the other one. Okay. So right here, you just do a neutral jump and stab this ghost to get it out of the way and set up this guy. You will have to take one hit, but it's the same pattern here. Um, oops, let's state one. Although that's uh, the next, next video. <laughs> okay, so take one hit just to set up the spacing. And you want to learn just how far your dagger hitbox goes. Oops. You know, I could fight this guy in this direction, but... Oops, I might get pushed the wrong way. Just show how not used to this I really am. Get hit anyway. Basically, it's worth the health cost, to me, anyway. Uh, I think you can actually uh, kill a ghost on a later screen. But I'm trying to head into town anyway, so I want to push this guy from left to right. Okay, again, just getting the double stabs where you need them, or where they happen, even. Let's see if I can do a no double stab uh, setup as well. One more fireball from off screen, but that's where it would be. Or you could just fire a deluge at that point. Remember, three stabs and a deluge is kind of the magic number. Should have jumped. Should have jumped for that one so I could uh, build up walk speed. <laughs> you might not want to do that though, because as you can see, my magic meter is getting a little bit low, and you need to have uh, three shots for the first dungeon for reasons I'll explain in the next video. Okay. So with 2,800 gold, we finally have uh, <laughs> the right amount to get some of these. Wing boots. I just press up. Uh, your menu will go down there before the game finishes loading, like all the all the text. Press B to cancel. I kept my walk speed. Good. Then you want to go into the tallest building here, the chapel, cathedral. Uh, this guy gives you... Oh, he gave me a title. Okay, this save state is wrong then, because... Uh, I should have less than a thousand experience. This guy will try to give me a password. Uh, is this ba oh, it's based on state nine. I see. All right then. No wait. I don't have to go back this far. Oops. <laughs> okay, I'll just go back to here then. Basically, I'm always going to go for the damage boost anyway, because I'm fine with uh, using the first sub-six minutes of the run to speculate on a nice time saver. I mean, nothing nothing hard happens before that. Dark Souls runners restart every eight minutes anyway. They don't get BKH, so... <laughs> that was a deluge, actually. You can check my inputs, you'll see I held up for that. Yeah, that was from nice and far away. Nice. Let go just in time and got the reset. Oops. If you... <laughs> you'll take a lot of damage if you get hit there by mistake, so be careful. Just play it safe, don't go for two double stabs. That's actually my advice, seriously. Just getting way too swaggy in here. Okay, there we go. That's that's actually what it should say. It should say 2851 and less than 650 experience. Uh, some of these save states are from an older route where I built up a thousand experience to get a 500 bonus gold, which just, it was a slow way to get 500 gold. That's the short version. Oh, I lost walk speed going into the building. And he tries to give you a password, but you can press B to deny it. The important thing is that this will change where you respawn to right there. Okay, I guess I'll continue up to uh, where you use your first wing boots. Sorry. Which would be state one. Right here. Although I did miss something. <laughs> okay, so... 
Pretend I didn't have to do all that stuff. I'm actually just gonna use frame skip. Okay, so what you do here... Whoa, what caused that? That's really weird. I don't think I've ever climbed so fast I got hit by the second ghost. Or is it... Did I really just cause that? This is actually... <laughs> this is actually some new technology, if this is real. How do I do this? Okay, if I can't do it after this many tries, then this is... Oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> this is some really crazy optimization. This is actually the hardest thing I've discovered by accident in this game. I don't even know if this will lead to anything. This can't possibly be worth it. Can't lose any height. It's got to be maximum height jump arc. I can't get it. Okay. Let's just stick to the strat I had then. Or, wow. Just trying to do the strat, but I, I accidentally get this crazy speculation. So the reason why I'm so excited for this is because uh, this is what you normally do. You just climb only a little bit, get a ladder reset, and then just jump again. Um, if you climb, if you climb as high as possible. <laughs> hmm. uh, there are a couple things. Hmm. That's funny. Okay, so a couple funny things going on there. Uh, how did I explain this? There was a way, I, the way I was doing the screen before was uh, really strange and suboptimal. Oops, yeah, don't fall down. That would actually be a reset pretty much because the screen has an item on it. And so uh, having to re-enter it will mess up your item counter. So the reason I'm so excited is, uh, I wonder if you can jump off early if you get hit by that guy. Oh no, I missed my chance to find out. It looks like you totally could. How do I cause this though? First of all, is it possible to go... Huh. Is it possible to go crooked on a ladder? I wonder if that has something to do with it. Not, not that badly though. Okay, right, the important thing is uh, make sure you jump again as soon as possible, because then you'll get hit again and knocked back in an unfavorable direction. Um, you don't even have to climb very high. Your invincibility lasts long enough to jump through that ghost again. Oh, that's, <laughs> I guess that's actually bad. Just getting hit by that second ghost will just mess up your spacing. That's funny. So the rare the rare thing I'm farming for doesn't seem to be a good thing. Basically, stick with this strat. Um, if you jump really far forward, like this, you'll you can run across the top, but it actually doesn't make any difference. If anything, it's worse actually. Also, this that early hit is worse. Yeah, because you get stuff like that happening, or you can miss your ladder reset. So it's worth it to stay low actually. And yeah, you should slip between those guys. Then what you do is uh, place your back foot here and open the item menu and pick wing boots, but uh, I didn't buy them to save time here. So this is state one. This shows uh, your first wing boots use, but I'm gonna stop part one here. So this is all the early easy stuff. So to recall, it's uh, oh, my gold looks a little weird. Oh, it's cause I made this save state from a password. So some of the RNG might be funny. Anyway. So, this is part one, from the start of the game up to uh, the second town called Fourpaw, I think. Up to um, basically where you get your first password, basically before you buy your first wing boots. So that's probably how I'll divide up these parts, but this has been part one, way longer than I planned for it to be. But uh, 
If you made it this far, thanks for watching. I'll try to do a better job on the later ones.